Hi, my name is Paddy Hirsch. I'm a senior editor at Marketplace. Today I want to talk about Mark to Market. The reason being because there's a big debate raging about Mark to Market. Some people say that it's a totally appropriate way to value a bank's assets or an investment company's assets. Other people say that it's one of the reasons that we're seeing the banks take such massive losses, whereas in fact they may not have made some of these losses at all. But before we get into that debate, let's just talk exactly about what Mark to Market is. I think the, uh, the term is actually fairly self-explanatory. Okay. Marking to market means that you go out and you mark or record the value of their assets according to what the market says it is. So let's uh, use an analogy, and we'll use a, a toy store as an analogy. All right? Here's our toy store owner, Jim. All right, nice chap, Jim. In his store, he's got uh, a number of types of toys. He's got, uh, he's got games. All right, he's got dolls. And he's got Legos. All right. Now, if Jim wants to find out what his store is worth, all he has to do is add up the value of the stuff that in his, is in his store, right? So he wants to know how much his games, he knows how much his games are worth because he calls around and he looks at the market and he, find, he does his price discovery, so-called, and he finds that um, you know, all of his games put together at the various prices are going to be worth, say, uh, say a million dollars, big store. And uh, he, he's got a, a bunch of dolls there as well. He works out how much the dolls are going to be worth by doing his price discovery, and he finds that they're worth, say, um, 500000 All right, likewise with Legos, goes out, prices it, prices it according to the market, sees what people are paying, and works that out at $500,000 as well. So he really is, at the end, the total value of the goods that he has in his, in his store is worth um, $2 million. Say he's got another $500 in cash. He's got, um, we now know that he's got, $2.5 million in it altogether. That's the value of his business. And what he's done is he's gone out and he's essentially, he's, by marking to market, he's gone out and he's found out how, each, how much each one of his games is going to fetch in the market if he sold it that day. If he wants to sell it that day, he has to find out where to price it, adds it all up, how much the dolls, how much the Legos, and that gets him the value, I guess you could call this the value of his portfolio of toys, is $2 million. So how is this like a, an investment company? Well, an investment company is really no different in that respect. Now, here's our banker. Okay, and he's got in his bank, he's got, say, bonds. He's got stock. And say he's a bit adventurous, right? He's got that and he gets some mortgage-backed securities also. In order to find out how much his stuff is worth, He'll go out and he'll say, well, how much can I get for these bonds? He'll go out to the bond traders in the market. He'll talk to them about his bonds. And they'll tell him, well, altogether, these bonds that you have are worth, say, you know, $5 million. What about the stock? Checks out the stock. A lot of it has gone down in price recently because the market's deteriorated. These days, you know, I guess uh, a year ago, his stock was worth, you know, $7 million. Now it's only worth another five, worth five, right, because it's deteriorated. Mortgage-backed securities, likewise. Quite a significant decline here. He had uh, 20 million in mortgage-backed securities back in the day. It's dropped to by 75%. He's only got 5 million there as well. So he adds up the value of his portfolio, and it comes to 15 million dollars. Just like Jim at the toy store, he's gone out. He has priced all of the items. If he was going to sell them today, this is what he would have to price them at, according to the market. He's marked it to market, and this is the value that he's got. All right. So, and just like Jim. Jim hasn't sold any of these items at this point. He just, if he was going to sell them that day, this is what they'd be worth. I mean, he may have, he may have spent $2 million on games, but he was a, maybe he's a, he's, a, he's a little bit uh, of a bad businessman, and he bought the wrong games. The value of those games has fallen in the interim. He's had to mark them down, and now they're only worth $1 million. That's quite possibly the case with, uh, with our bank manager. He might have, his bonds may have been worth $10 million a year ago, but again, because the economy has fallen, nobody wants to buy bonds, corporate bonds right now. They've dropped by 50%. They're now only worth, worth a, a half a million. So this is essentially what mark-to-market is. It's a fairly simple concept. All you do is you go out, you find out how much your assets are worth, and you price it um, to, to the market. But you can see, you can get an idea now of why this is impacting the banks so much. Because the banks have all of these assets on their books, and the economy has, has fallen extremely precipitously. Uh, you know, nobody wants to buy um, stock and bonds, corporate bonds and mortgage-backed securities and CDS right now. They're all very worried that the entire market is going to collapse. So they just yank their money from the market. 
And as a result, it means that the, 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 the bid price, the price they're willing to pay, falls away, which forces the offer price, that's to say the price at which uh, the bank would like to sell, has to come down if the bank is going to actually get rid of some of its assets. Now, you may say to yourself, well, maybe what if the bank doesn't get rid of those assets and the bid and the offer price stay far apart? Well, that, that can certainly happen. But what's been happening recently is that the banks have been also keen to get out of the market because they're worried about it falling away, and they've been selling hard into the market themselves. And also hedge funds who've been redeeming assets, they've been selling assets into the market. So you can usually, you can always find, a, you can mostly find a price for these assets because somebody is, is selling into the market and you, you'll get some distressed buyer who's picking, picking that stuff up at a, at a discount price. And what this means is that um, the banks are recording losses by selling into the market. So when you hear about Citibank you know, recording a massive loss, half of that is because, well, a, a proportion of that is because it's actually selling assets into the market. The other half, or the other proportion of that, is because it's being forced to mark its assets down. In the case of bonds, for example, you know, we all know that a bond can, um, has a maturity date. In five or ten years, or however many years, the bond will mature, and the bondholder will get his money back. But So Citigroup, or this banker, Mr. Jimson here, may decide that he wants to hold on to these, these bonds in perpetuity. He may decide he wants to hold them to maturity and get his money back. So he's going to hold it no matter where the price is. Unfortunately, because the way you have all of these other sellers in the market, it doesn't matter what Mr. Jimson thinks. These other sellers have driven the price down to 50 cents on the dollar. By, so they've driven it down by half. That means Mr. Jimson has to mark his portfolio down by 50%. Even though he believes it's worth 100% in the long term, he has to mark it down to 50% at this point. And that's the other thing that's driving the bank's uh, portfolio values down so far. And that's one of the reasons that uh, people argue that it's not appropriate to mark to market because you, you know, these, these assets have life beyond just the, the daily price because they can mature, many of these assets can actually mature and pay out in time. Not everybody agrees with that, of course. They say it's entirely appropriate that you should mark these assets to market because if a bond is trading at 50, at 50 cents on the dollar, maybe that's because people believe there's only a 50% chance that it will actually pay out in the end. So that's the reason for marking to market, or at least one of them. But the, the fact is that the whole process of marketing to market certainly has impacted banks' portfolios. It's forcing them to record losses on paper that they may not actually have realized because they haven't sold assets. But what, and what it has done is left them very badly, most of them, needing a drink. <laughs>